So what we're going to do as a group now is, is cycle through different ways of moving, different polarities. Again, the body likes this contrast. Um, these are mostly from a guy called R Rudolf Laban, who was a big name in the dance world. He's considered like the Einstein of dance, so I sort of bow to him for this is where most of them come from. Remembering they're not just ways of moving, though. They're ways of being. They're ways of being in ourselves, in relationship, in our work. So that's the significance of movement from a leadership point of view. We move how we are, and if we want to change how we are, we can change how we move. Real simple. So the first movement polarity is how much movement. So first of all, let's do lots of movement. So do as much movement with your whole body as you safely can. Go. So this is about being alive. This is about being awake. This is about desire. It's about expressing emotion. It's about activity at work. And now as still as you can. So just your breathing and your pulse as still as you can, really still. Now as much movement as you can. And now as still as you can. And noticing which is familiar, so come to a more natural level of stillness. So noticing which is familiar, who felt very comfortable with lots of movement? by show of hands, and who felt very comfortable with stillness? Some people it's both, some people it's just one or the other. Yeah? Um, no, I noticed that some of you, irrespective of body or age or fitness, were capable of much more movement than others. This is our sort of basic movement polarity. Okay, the next one, weight, heavy versus light. So go for a walk, but in a very heavy way. So you can think of that as grounded if you want something positive. So this is about your commitment. This is about being determined, being a consequential consequence, being weighty emotionally. Now let's try lightness. So bouncing, skipping, floating is really light movement. Thinking up, intending up. So this is about being non-attached, being accommodating, being playful, being emotionally light. Notice that some of them are better than others. They can do it more easily, yeah? OK, stop there. Come to an, whatever to you is normal. And remember, normal isn't normal. Normal is habitually heavy or habitually light. We're going right into the extremities so you can see the contrast. Yeah? So who felt most at home with heavy? More at home with the heavy polarity. Great. And who felt more at home with light? OK. Heavy is not wrong. So Frankie, if you show us a sort of seriousness, Frankie's a man of great integrity and depth. And for me, that comes with heaviness. Yeah. So that heaviness that Frankie can have is a very positive thing. There's a seriousness to that. And for example, from a leadership point of view, you need to be able to be taken seriously. Heaviness adds gravitas, gravity. Lightness adds lightness and playfulness. The next one is direct versus circular. So direct, very linear. I work a lot in the Netherlands, and that's quite a common movement pattern there. Yeah? In England, where I, where I live, there's a much more circular movement pan. So it's often like, um, yeah, there's this thing that I need you to work on on this. Is that, yeah? Is that okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so while these, again, are, these are ways of being, they're not just ways of moving. So that's what we're going to play with now. So show me direct, move as directly as possible. Clear to the point, specific attention. Purposeful, focused, now more circular. So much more broad attention, much more flexible, much more sort of process rather than purpose, diffuse. If you think of places like um, Japan, Japan would be another one as opposed to say the United States. Yeah. More circular, like a catwalks. Meandering, like a river. Yeah, less like an arrow, more like a river. Who felt more comfortable with direct? So I'm a very direct person, I would. Anyone want to join me? <laughs> One or two, OK. OK, who felt more sort of circular? So it could be more kind of, sometimes it's like more polite or more political or more interested in the process than the end result. Both really matter from a leadership point of view. Learning the range of being able to do both is very important. Next one, sudden versus sustained. So sudden movement is you stop and then you move. Staccato, sudden, it's abrupt, immediate, like I want a quick goal, I need to win now. Abrupt movement. 
sudden emotion. Think of a, like an Italian suddenly having an emotional response. Now sustain, so it's continuous, like a steamroller or like a river, so continuous movement. Doesn't have to be fast or slow, but continuous. It's like a rolling quality to it. Persistence, commitment, long-term sustainability rather than quick goals. Who felt more at home with um, the sudden movement pattern? Caroline, it's def definitely yours. <laughs> no? Okay. Who felt more at home with sustained? See, what you sometimes notice is groups develop a culture or groups of people, towns, places do. When I do this in companies, a certain department might well have a certain way of, of doing it as well as their personal way, yeah? So conversationally, some people are much more abrupt, yeah? Um, you'll see this in certain cultures again. Without stereotyping, because it's not every culture, cultures do exist and they are embodied. So we might see Italian culture having much more of an abrupt quality compared to, say, Spanish or Swedish culture, which is much more like a steady rolling quality of conversation rather than a quick d d The good thing about abrupt, of course, is that it can turn and change, whereas steady is like an oil tanker that needs 10 miles to turn around. You know, the good thing about steady is it's not, as Frankie's much more steady than I am, it's, it's, not, um, uh, it's not shocking somehow. There's a consistency to it, which is kind of dependable. Yeah. Integrated versus disintegrated. So integrated is everything moves in one direction and everything together. Authentic, trustworthy, kind of single tasking, very aligned. Culturally, it's having a very strong cultural identity rather than having a mixed or weak cultural identity. Now contrast that with disintegrated. So part of you goes one way, part of you goes another. Like when we walked across the room and your attention was elsewhere. It's a lot, it can feel inauthentic or untrustworthy, or maybe just a little multitasking if you're used to sort of doing five things at once. So you're on your phone, you're on the computer, you're reading your book, all those things at once. Free versus bound, okay? So free, now your Brightonians should be good at this. So free movement, <laughs> really release it. Uninhibited, flowing, freedom. Okay, now let's try self-control. Let's try being careful, let's try being controlled. Bound movement. So in, again, certain cultures, this might be more common. I was in Singapore working, far more common there. Yeah? What's it like to feel, feel not better or worse than being free? Being controlled is important too, right? So it's rule bound, there's social rules there. You're careful. Nothing moves accidentally. Everything's in its right place, like a classical martial art or ballet form rather than a free or improvised form. So there's a bound quality, a bit more muscular tension perhaps. Notice how the room changes now. It feels real different, right? Who felt most comfortable with free, kind of released movement? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. OK, and who felt more comfortable with the slightly more um, ordered, kind of controlled, bound movement? Yeah. And, and it's not bad. It kind of sounds bad in language. But actually, you know, if, you, if you're completely free and I'm here, you'd be like a toddler, like a two-year-old. From a leadership point of view, we need to be both liberated and free and expansive and expressive, but also able to manage ourselves, yeah, to, to order our conduct. Our, our ethics, for example, can be about having a certain, I don't do this, I do do that. So as with any form, the questions are, what's familiar? That's probably what you're doing the most of, yeah? What do you make bad? Like, let's say free and bound, you might say, oh, free, that's horrible, those people are crazy hippies. And bound, you might say, oh, those people are uptight, they're control freaks. So noticing what you make bad, that's usually what you have less access to. We go to extremes, so we feel the difference, and we build our range by practicing different things. We could then add a practice, for example, learning classical ballet or karate to become more uh, bound, more, more controlled, or like this, a kind of dance which is completely releasing to learn that. So we learn a practice to then build that way of being in ourselves either a committed practice like that or a micro practice like you know how we walk to work make it a bit freer or a bit more controlled